Welcome to Chikri's Maintenance. In a previous video, you saw me remove a Hall effect sensor um, from this area and a Meritron sensor uh, called the DCM100 that actually interprets the data from the Hall effect sensor. I sent them in because um, they were not reproducing the data that I was getting from either a clamp-on uh, amp meter or my shunt. So I sent that in to be calibrated and when they tried to calibrate it, they found that there was an internal fault that prevented them from calibrating it. So under warranty, they sent me a brand new DCM100 and they were going to send me back the transducer that I sent, but apparently they sent me a brand new one. So um, I'm going to install these two devices. In the previous video, you saw what was involved in taking them out, so I'm not gonna show you me putting them back in, but I'll show you me testing and confirming that everything works once they're installed. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I spared you me installing this stuff, but here's the Hall effect sensor back in place, and here's the Meritron um, DMC100 uh, with all the wires hooked up and the NMEA 2000s hooked up. So now is the next step is just to um, it's not necessarily a calibration, but just to make sure that the Meritron system, this one knows that there is a 400 amp um, Hall effect sensor because the Meritron uh, by default thinks there's a 200 amp. So I just have to make some adjustments and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so I'm up here in front of my um, computer that has the Meritron system on it. And uh, I also run Time Zero and the Meritron N2K View, what I normally see. But I also have N2K Analyzer on here. And this is where you program all of the um, Meritron parameters that are loaded to the individual units on the N2K network. So I'm just going to wait for this to load. Comes up here in just one second. Just gonna move this so you can see it just a little bit better. And then this lists all of my individual components that are on the N2K network. And I'm looking for the DCM100, which is right here. And then I'm going to right click and do configure device. And then the device comes up and I'm going to go to battery. My battery capacity is 1200 amp hours. And the temperature coefficient, um, because I have lithium iron phosphate batteries, I bring that to zero. And I bring the uh, Pukert's exponent down to 1.00. Same thing, this is, this is all for um, charging capacity. Charging efficiency factor, I'm going to go to 100. Now, because I put that at one, it's already defaulted. Fully charged voltage, um, I put this at 13.8. Um, when we charge, we actually go to 14.4 volts, uh, but that's to balance it. Um, I want it to think that the full voltage is 13.8. Uh, fully charged current, 2%. Um, I'm going to bring that down to 0.8%. Nominal voltage, 12. Equalization not supported. Fully charged. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. Battery temperature sensor. I do have that one. Time remaining to floor, time remaining average period, zero. Um, so I'm gonna manually set the battery to max right now. And what I'm gonna do with that is it's just telling the battery that it's fully charged. Right after I do this, I'm going to actually balance the batteries, bring them up to 14.4 um, volts and balance them that way for six hours. And I'm gonna come back in and click this to max one more time. Then I'm gonna go into the advanced features. See, you can see the current sensor is set at 200 amps. I'm gonna move that to 400 amps because that's what I have. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna put configuration to device. And what that does is it takes it from this computer 
and it sends it to that black box that's in uh, by the inverter chargers. So I'm going to do that. It's successfully been put to the device. I'm going to close this and then I'm going to close this as well. And then I'm going to launch my N2K view. And then you can see the DC services here. I guess to a certain extent you can't because the shifter knob is, I'm gonna move this out of the way. So uh, DC voltage 13.6. I'm currently drawing about a 10th of an amp. Uh, it's not showing any DC power because I'm not using anything. It's showing that I'm at full capacity, 1200 amp hours. Uh, time remaining is infinite and I have no ripple voltage. So those are the things that I monitor uh, when we're underway. I'm going to um, draw some down just a bit uh, to make sure that everything works the way it should. And then I'm going to charge it back up. Um, so first, let me put a load on it. So I've discharged, discharged the uh, charger. So right now you can see the house is drawing down 6.7. So what I'm going to do is actually put on a more load and make sure that it um, aligns with what I see with my shunt and a clamp-on voltmeter. So my shunt is saying 19.7, um, 19.8, let me see, go look see what it says again, uh, 19.5 right now on the shunt, and 19.7. So um, I'm going to track this and see if that two tenths of a amp is going to be any kind of issue. Um, I would imagine that they're not always going to be perfect. But now I'm going to turn those loads off and I'm going to go to uh, balance and I should go to a positive number. So I'm switching off the loads right now. And I should be down to about 6.7 amps. I'm going to Engage the charger now, and and now putting in 84. It's it's bouncing around, but okay, that says 88. And let me see what this says down here. 85.9, 87. Hmm, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to investigate this with the clamp-on meter, but. It's uh, closer than it was before, so I'm just going to mess around and see um, which one's more accurate, and I'll be back. So you saw me just check um, the amperage draw. I was comparing the shunt and the uh, Hall effect sensor here. I also did a clamp on meter, and um, they all agree pretty close, but there's um, plus or minus about a half an amp. Um, I don't know what that effect is going to have over like a 15 hour period. So I'm going to leave everything the way it is right now and just test it over the next couple months um, and see if my results of time left and how many amp hours are used seem to jive with my shunt um, so that I can have that redundancy. So for right now, I'm gonna end the video once again, I appreciate you subscribing, commenting, and liking my videos, and I'll see you next week.